YouTube, welcome back to another One Life EUF Realism event. Tonight, it's going to be another good one, hosted by the IR9. We've got multiple clans taking part tonight, and it is going to be your standard EUF One Life Realism event using the Postscript and Realism mod. Quickly introducing the event, the map you can see on screen right now. This is the play area. The players are going to be, uh, the teams are going to be competing in tonight. The objectives are very, very simple. Whoever controls the majority of these three objectives by the end of the 90 minutes game time wins. And if one team takes them all, they win outright, no matter the time limit. Uh, the qu Quickly looking at the rules, it's the standard rules right here. EUF rules apply. That means that medics can only revive, blah, 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 things like that. 90 minutes game time. Both teams have three reinforced ways and both teams have selected what kind of division they want to be using tonight and the other team doesn't know what they're using. Um, to capture a zone, you have to sit in it for five minutes, and then you get it. And um, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope this intro was just, you know, a brief little introduction, and uh, enjoy the video. Here we go. They may be the quiet ones, but we're live with another weekend EUF event. IO9 and the 6J battling it out in tonight's event, utilizing the postgrid and realism mod. I hope the introduction was satisfactory. At this point, most of these events run the same way. You know what the gist is right now. And it's nice to see a full group of one united clan. So we've got a full group of 39 players from 6J and 39 players from IO9. People will join and leave. You know how these servers are. You disconnect and reconnect. Uh, we've had a little smoke grenade going off already. Is that a flare or was that just a phosphorus ram from a mortar? Like, who the hell fired that? Interesting. More mortars coming down now. And Seb and Rosberg are the first one, uh, first casualties of this engagement. I'm going to assume those are uh, IO-9 mortars. You would hope those are IO-9 mortars. So how this event works is both teams are technically on the attack tonight. Whoever controls the majority of the free zones wins after the 90 minutes. Uh, if I hold Y, 90 minutes. And it's, uh, okay, I've got track of the time. Uh, we've got BIA joining the IO9 tonight, a part of their steel, <laughs> steel pack group. Two clans that work very closely together. And it is the German mortars that we can hear firing. And they uh, got the first kills for tonight. So, GG. Who are the German mortars? We've got Iron Glory. He's got a full-on crew of him, look. He's just, like, got a uh, full section just to defend him. So, yeah, uh, both teams are technically on the attack tonight. We'll see who comes out on top. We've got the uh, IL-9, the German team, pushing out very strong at the beginning. B uh, BIA are going a bit of a flank. We've got the 6J, who kind of have a uh, World War One firing line situation going on. They're putting some down some mortars themselves, we can see. I think it was Nuffle who was on the hand mortar then. Yeah, Nuffle's got his little hand mortar out. So we've got kind of like a uh, firing line going on here for the 6J who have uh, positioned themselves along this embankment, this road. They've also pushed forward and they've taken one of the windmills. Got a uh, two-man mortar crew here set up as well. So uh, it looks like we're going to have maximum PTSD tonight. Maximum shell shock as both teams are lining up. To bombard each other with artillery. You can see the uh, bombardment going into the tree lines here. As it looks like the 6J did spot the German forces moving through this little tree line here. Oh, a first volley of gunshots going down. And some accurate shots there as Hannibal. Hannibal and Klun took a little bit of rifle fire there. A little bit of small arm fire. So the 6J with some accurate fire. You can hear the MG42 or is it a 34? Let's have a look. We've got an MG34 now raining fire back towards the 6J, the Allied position, and we've got a casualty from the Allies. It's uh, Matt, Matja, Matja. He's being dragged down from the embankment, so medics can tend to his wounds. I am lagging a little bit, so if I get disconnected, I have no idea why my ping shot up to 500. Hopefully, I don't leave the server. That's a massive oh and a big artillery strike there from the 6j and a second one almost taking out peach bunker and sticks that's a big artillery round coming in there from the mortars and a second one takes out krupp and mung oh no krupp is still alive sorry he looked dead to me but that's a big artillery round we've actually got some friendly fire kills as well that might have actually been friendly fire mortars there as pete and stick then go down Oh, what did, talent, did Talentless Loss shoot at them? 
But that is one of the German uh, uh, infantry squadrons basically wiped out from some very accurate fire. And also some misfortunate friendly fire there as well. Um, taking them out. Let's head on over and see how the BIA... My ping is still super high. I don't know what's going on here. Um, someone might be downloading porn. So uh, do forgive me. Crit, Winters, Reza, Dark, and Fried Parrot. What a name. They're pushing towards the lighthouse. So there are a lot of uh, little divots, little deep trenches they can use to hide in. As they push forward, do their advance. As uh, it is the Germans who have got the majority of the objective right now. They've taken most of the uh, most of the map is in their hands. Although their flank over here, on the western side through the tree lines, lots of casualties are having to fall back a little bit. As the 6J do push a couple of squad members forward, but that barn is under a lot of mortar fire. See, Thunder and Pope have made it towards the barn, but that uh, barn is under continuous mortar fire from the German side. Over towards the windmill, we've got 6J pushing forward to the windmills more. The uh, second windmill has now been taken by the 6J as they're starting to push forward more and more, starting to claim a little bit of map control. Again, look at the amount of terrain that is uh, that can be used on this map. These uh, divots, these raises. These uh, natural trenches that are being made. Another one right here that both teams can utilize in their pushes forward. You've got the Ion 9 here using a uh, raised bankman. So we're in for a... I feel like we're going to get a, a mixture of combat styles tonight. I feel like we're going to have a, a mixture of long range bombardment and rifle fire mixed with some close quarter action once we get into these trenches. And you can see the 6J are pushed all the way forward to this hedgerow now using this little raised embankment to their advantage. Webb, he's the first one to go down here. Reed has almost gone down. Also gone down, should I say? As uh, German mortars landing very accurately now onto the uh, main road embankment. Becker has gone down and Robertson also gone down. Robertson being picked back up, but they're going to have to back away quickly because those German mortars are getting very accurate. Large smoke screen going down as well. I'm not sure whose smoke screen that was. I'm going to guess that was Allied smoke screen to help on their push forward, maybe. Oh, Jablonski has made his return. And he, they've given him a sniper, the Shroud of Postscriptum. Kennedy is watching this flank, making sure no one comes from the flank. Let's head on over and see how the BIA are uh, handling the situation right now. They've got basically a mirror embankment to what the 6J have with some hedgerows covering it. Brezza is going to be revived as Crit throws a grenade out there. Lanta was trying to get the MG in position, but that rifle fire just suppresses him and pushes him back. This trench row here would be very good to uh, 6J to claim. If they can get this trench row, you can see it basically runs the entire breadth, uh, breadth of the map. If they can get whatever team controls this uh, trench row will give, uh, give them great cover. You can see it starts from all the way here. They can use this uh, natural uh, land ditched trench to run the entire breadth of the center of the map. So whichever team gets that trench is going to give them a good power position to hold. And it's actually the 6J who are now pushing forward over here on the western flank. Smoke screens going down for them. As they're pushing forward more. Robertson there, Jonathan, Shaw, McCribbin. Watch out, McCribbin didn't get any team kills. They're pushing forward to the tree line now. This tree line is going to leave them very exposed temporarily, and there isn't that much hard cover in this tree line, aside from the trees themselves. They're going to have to watch out over here. They're leaving the uh, safety of their embankments and the trenches. Few more casualties being sustained over here, though, from BIA. You can see they've uh, sort of three casualties to their squad, and the rest of their squad have taken minor, minor injuries as well. As Zico and Philip over here have also taken a casualty. You might remember there's three respawn ways for this event. There is a 90 minute time limit with a 10 minute extra time if a point is contested. But uh, the event can be over before then if uh, casualties um, rack up and all to if teams use all their respawns. If Born don't tend to his wounds, he's. Um, Bon? 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 
I'm also wounded. One. <laughs> Frankie, save him. As uh, the six jet push forward more, they've got a full uh, squad now in this uh, thatch roof barn building. As McCribbin's gone down, probably for the best. Jonathan Robertson and Shaw uh, they're holding the edge of the forest. As casualties are starting to rack up on both sides. Medics will be working overtime tonight. Yablinski has gone down. Trebian's also gone down. But yeah, this would be an ideal map for medics because there's a lot of hard cover they can run behind. You'd expect the medics tonight to get a lot of revives and a lot of heals down. Reed with some long-range rifle shots there from his Enfield trying to, trying to pinpoint these BIA squad members. It's the BIA here. Keeping their heads down at this point. Apart from Brezza. Brezza's looking to get a few kills. So we've had a little bit of a back and forth. The uh, the German team came out strong initially. They've uh, suffered a heavy blow. Especially to those mortars early on. And they might have already caught a respawn wave here. So you can see reinforcements starting to head down. From uh, their main base. As mortars are starting to land on that thatch roof again, and you can see a few casualties on the ally side who moved into that thatch, thatch barn. Not safe. Hard cover isn't, uh, isn't guaranteed in these buildings. Again, those medics are having to work overtime here. Although Eldar, I don't think Eldar is going to be, uh, be uh, saved. Yep, yeah, doing that right now. Jenkins, yeah, Let's just go to the air and see what's going on at the moment. So you can see the 6GA more cautiously, more cautiously move forward at the beginning. They had that nice firing line, but after those mortars had some successful strikes and they picked up a few more with rifle fire, they started to push forward from their initial uh, uh, hold line along the main road. The German side suffered some heavy casualties early on from those accurate mortars. And now they're having to reorganize. They did take the majority of map control, but they did suffer heavily from it. So let's have a look at the kills and deaths quickly. Uh, let me just zoom this all the way up so we can both see on both sides. So we've got uh, 10 kills and 10 deaths for the Allies versus 7 kills, 24 deaths for the Germans. 13 wounds versus 6, 8 revives versus 2. So you can see the Allies just having the advantage a little bit. Kills-wise, it's pretty equal. But well, the allies are itching out a little bit. Obviously, team kills aren't counted in that end score. You can see uh, IR9, another three men squadron going down there. As Iron Glory, he's uh, moved his mortar forward a little bit. He's trying to get some accurate fire here, guided to him by Maximan. Oh, what an MG position. That That is a deadly M MG position, this. Look at that MG position. I'm going to have to remember about this MG position right here. That is a, that's a deadly one, man. Holy shit. What a, what a position to be in. That's probably the best MG position I've ever seen. Yeah, so one thing the Postscription Realism mod does now as well is allows you to move mounted MGs. So instead of... Once you place a mounted MG, that's it. You can't uh, remove. Uh, you can't do anything with it. It's just stationary. It's stuck there unless you destroy it. Postgrid and real mod changes that, so you can build an MG and then you can dismantle it and carry it with you and place it into a new position. Something that they need to bring to the base game because that is huge. Uh, Scott and Grimes, they both go down there. They actually get hit by some very accurate German mortars, and that means the Allied mortar team now is completely out of commission unless they can recover those mortars that's going to mean the advantage goes back to the germans now the germans have the heavy artillery on their side well it's not heavy it's just artillery germans are going to have the artillery on their side now which uh allows them to put more pressure on the allies you can see the uh, german team reorganizing over here a little bit getting their squad strength back to norm uh, back to full strength wait is dio playing in this 
Dio playing in this? That's not the same Dio, is it? Is that a different Dio? I know it is Dio. Damn, Dio. I didn't know you were playing in this event. All right. Don't let us down. Where are you on the scoreboard at the moment? No kills and one death. Disappointment. Yep, he speaks German. Yeah, yeah I can remember he, he told us he spoke German. He lived in Germany a bit, from what I remember. As the BIA have actually suffered more casualties over here. The BIA squad down to just three. Uh, two, sorry. Fried Parrot and Dark Dudden. Uh, the uh, Allied Mortars are back up. No, they're not back up yet. It's uh, Scott and Grimes. Their tags are still there. Big wave of uh, small arm fire going out here. As a 6th year, trying to put, play some pressure across the map, doing some crossfire towards the BIA position. You see a couple of the bullets there just ricocheting off the ground. As uh, Dark Denon, or Durden, is doing his best to try to get the BIA squad back into action. Medic, working overtime. If the Allies had mortars right now, that would be the perfect place for the Allied mortars to fall. They could get a whole squad wipe. But yeah, their mortars are currently uh, being bombarded. And those mortars are getting very accurate on the Allied position here. Lecter, Yablinski, and Reed almost going down. Lecter's having to tend to his wounds. And the 6J are starting to their push out now. Can the 6J use this cover and get into this uh, trench row here? If they can get into this trench row here, that is a huge... Like we said, this is kind of a power position on this map right now. This trench row runs the entire breadth of the map. If they can take it, it gives them some great hard cover and it allows them to send runners up and down the map to support the rest of their team. You see, the first squadron has made it a five-man squad here. Kennedy, Lemon, Watson, Yokel. Yokel with a grenade trying to land on the BIA here. Just falls too short behind the embankment. Yokel with a grenade as well. See where it got. I didn't see it land. Yeah, it just falls a little bit too short. Woolly Pete's going out now. A few smoke grenades. Interesting Carlson. I don't know what Carlson's doing. He's maybe trying to signal back to the rest of his team that they can push forward and it's clear. And yeah, here comes the next wave of 6J infantry. Lecter, Reed, and Yablinski. They're trying to get into this big trench row as machine gun fire is coming. Crossfire coming across from the other side of the map, from the western portion of the map. Yablinski has that sniper. He's trying to uh, trying to spot the MG in turn, return fire, but unable. Reed makes it into the trench with just minor injuries. But that is some very accurate crossfire coming from uh, from the western portion of the map. Let's go have a look. Was it Dio? No, it wasn't Dio. It was uh, Blitzkrieg, most likely here. He's the one with the MG in his hands. Some great crossfire firing from west to east there. As uh, the 6th year have reinforced the south side of this forest line. You can see more and more infantrymen from the 6th year are forming on this southern point of this forest line. As the 6th year are suffering a few casualties over in this trench row. Carson and Reed have gone down. Looks like they got hit by a grenade or a mortar, potentially. As Lemon there, he takes a headshot. 6J are going to be, be careful here. They're, they're poking out this trench row and they're taking casualties from it. Kennedy just pushed forward. Bowler, born and Hope then. The next one's pushed forward. They're going to have to watch out. It's the uh, BIA still have two infantrymen alive. They've fallen back a little bit into the tree line. As the IR-9 are setting up some strong positions here. Mortars going down there. Some good mortar fire. And that MG got itself into a new position now. Look at that MG in such a good position here. Just able to cut through the tree line. Smoke barrage going down. I'm unsure whose smoke barrage that could be. That could be both German or Allied. And there, the 6 year pushed their infantry into the connecting trench row. So the 6J are slowly creeping up the map. They've taken another trench, and this trench leads all the way down to the uh, eastern portion of the map as Rosberg and Seb are starting to push forward. They can hear the mortars. You just heard Seb saying he can hear them. 
They're using these bushes to try push forward. If they could get close enough, they could land some big grenade potentially. But that is open ground. They, if they want to push on that position, they have to run through open ground. It's going to be very hard for them to do that. The 6J over here on the southern side of the forest putting machine gun fire and rifle fire through the tree lines as the smoke lands in front of them, blinding them. As they newly arrived, infantry here for the 6J are putting down some rifle fire down the center of the map. Some suppressive fire and also a little bit of mortar fire going on there. As Bowler, Hope, and Bourne are here trying to secure this little raised hill with a lot of foliage and bushes. Rosberg and Seb getting hit by a couple of mortars there as they're trying to push forward. Those mortars landing very close to their position. Seb with a big grenade there. He is in grenade range. Oh, and it just falls a little bit too short. His grenade just fell inches short. If he has a second one, I'd honestly try to do a second grenade. Let's see if Seb and Rosberg... If Seb and Rosberg can get a few big grenades here, that could completely start to change the tide of this battle more. As the 6J are starting to push through the southern tree line as well, using that smoke as cover. And there, Rosberg, he poked his head up and that's what he gets. Does Seb have a grenade he can throw? Nope, here comes the German grenade. Seb is going to go down. Oh, he just didn't manage to survive. Didn't survive the second one, though. He threw a woolly peak. Too late, though. As the 6J are starting their next offensive, though. You can see the 6J over here on the eastern side of the map as well. They've pushed forward more and more out of that trench road. They're starting to get into the eastern tree line. Using the foliage on the edge, they've picked up a few kills there. Iron 9 and BIA both suffering casualties. Let's head on over to the west and see what's happening on the west now. A 6J. Oh, Nuffle just got a team kill on Yablinski. Nuffle, what the fuck? Killing your star player. As the 6J are pushing, trying to push through this uh, western tree line, they've just got hit by a grenade. IR9 are counter pushing. We've got Dio below us. Few casualties suffered to the Germans. And uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't stop them though they still hold the advantage over here it's only a small squad section from the 6j who are pushing through this tree line and they are heavily outnumbered by the german presence here robertson mccribbin jonathan all trying to push forward anderson shaw also there very close to the german infantry position yards away from each other at this point as pete puncher with that mg is spraying through the tree lines mccribbin there taking a few you stray bullets. Grenades going out. That's a big grenade from Flo. And that is the 6J completely wiped out. With Shaw getting the double kill on Robinson and Anderson. Just to, just to add cherry to the cake. And then Shaw gets wiped out. That's a brave push there on the western side. With very little numbers. Honestly surprised they decided to go for that. Uh, IR9 did do a push out themselves at some point. They pushed on Robson and Seth's position. And they suffered a few casualties. Only Hannibal and Zico is left alive over here. And more casualties over on the eastern portion of the map. As the 6J are still uh, continuing their push through this eastern tree line. They have suffered a few casualties. Both teams have called in one respawn wave. So we'll have to see who calls in the second first. I'd say the advantage at the moment in terms of numbers, especially on the east and in the center, is definitely on the Allies' hands. But over on the west, the west is completely exposed at this point, now that that small squad section had been wiped out. So 6J do have number advantage on the board. Can they, uh, can they take advantage of that? Seiko, he's the next victim to force as Svensson drops back. Gore's got his MG in a new position, ready to suppress through the tree line and cut down any any assault that the Allies might throw at them. These mortars are getting very accurate here for the Germans. 6J are going to have to practice their... put in their tactics into practice here, do that space spreading before those mortars get very accurate and start wiping them out. Was it Spredacity? Is that what you call it? Spredacity? That's what they call it, right? Let's see if Dio. Does Dio have any kills yet? Still no kills.
brain gun in position here with Bourne and Bowler trying to trying to spot. As that MG42 is returning fire through the trees, through the hedgerows, forcing the allies to keep their heads down. And Yoko pushing forward. They're going to have to watch out and careful for the uh, the western portion of the map. The west portion of the map is completely open. And if the uh, IR-9 decide, they can easily get an MG position up on the west and have it cover the eastern fields. Respawn Wave 2 has just been called by both teams by the looks of it. So both teams are at the exact same time calling in their respawn waves. As Trebian goes down there, the 6J need to push through these tree rows, but with that MG in position and those mortars coming down, it's proven very difficult for the 6J to get any ground here through the eastern trees. Yeah, I know. Stray shots going through. Let's hope he's the next one to go down to a mortar. Yeah, those mortars are very honed in on the uh, allied position right now. They uh, they need to either fall back or move forward because those mortars are slowly picking them off one by one. Especially before the reinforcements start to arrive. Uh, we've got some movement going on in the center here, though, in the uh, center trench. from uh, yeah, copy. Hitchy, you or, uh, Gallagher will be on smoke. the left side. So everyone so will be on the left side. That's friendly. Yeah, go for it. Right. Uh, northeast, let me give you a yeah, bearing. Sit, sit yeah. up here. Can you imagine one mortar now? <laughs> Max range, right to left, spread them. Um, right, I'm going to crawl. Thunder, get your rifle group on the double. Rifles on the double. You're, you're bunched yeah. up here. Come on. Go, go, go. Across the road. Across the road. Rifles. Everybody firing. MGs, move up. Holy shit. That mortar almost just went straight into Jenkins' ass. That would have been disastrous. If you and Germans up here, you just... Still stay with this. That was some very accurate mortifier there with them smokes. It actually hit that, that three man IO9 section that's moving into the mortars. And meanwhile, I'm not quite sure what caused all these casualties. Probably the Allied mortars in return, but German mortars have fallen silent for time being. This could be a good opportunity for the 6J to start getting some map control. Williams looks like he's been sent to try to find uh, the squad that was in the tree line, but. Little do they know that uh, squad in the tree line was wiped out. I some very accurate mortifying. You can just see a lot of names going down here for the uh, German team. These mortars incredibly accurate as we've got another, what's that, another four, five man section going down. Germans suffering a lot of casualties right now. So some very and another huge mortar strike there, completely took out the German mortar crew. Another four kills, and what remains of them? Zyko, Philip, and Marcus. They're gonna have to drop back now. The uh, Germans suffering a lot of lot of damage now to those very accurate Allied mortars. This is the time the Allies need to start getting more and more map control. You can see they've pushed all the way forward. They're about halfway up the uh, play of the map now. They've almost made it to the second objective. As reinforcements start to uh, start to arrive, to fill in the holes that were opened up. 
there is still a big concentration of German forces though in this dense, thick tree line on the western portion of the map. But when we talk about the eastern center of the map, the German uh, defense there is really, really shallow. There's only a handful. In fact, one, two, three, four, five. Only five Germans hold the center and west at the moment. They're trying to save this mortar. You can see Philip there and Zico trying to get that German mortar into a new position. Trying to also retrieve that MG and move it into a safer position as well. As the Allies are pushing forward more and more. They're starting to suppress as well into the western tree line. They've got a crossfire going on from the center and east now. Firing into the western tree lines. And they're actually getting a bunch of kills here from mortars and also rifle fire. See an MG there with Peach Puncher as the smokes and mortars are starting to land on, into the uh, western trees. And the mortars are doing an incredible job. Very accurate again for the Allies. The Allied mortar crew. Accommodations to them for how well and how accurate their mortar fire has been tonight. Huge, huge for the Allies. Let's just have a look at the kills again quickly. You can see a, 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 a gap starting to open now. 34 kills to 21 for the Allies. 28 deaths versus 52. 45 wounds versus 37. And 16 revives versus 12. A huge uh, a, a difference in kills starting to open up. Yablinski with 9 kills with that sniper. He's doing a good job with his sniper. I told you. Shroud. Shroud or post -ribbon. I don't see where the mortars are, though. The amount of mortar kills that have been happening. There's no one who stands out with a lot of mortar kills. You Blinty just got another kill now. 10 kills for him. We've got Iron Glory with 10 on the opposite side as well. As uh, the 6J are pushing forward more. They're starting to push through the center of the map. Now you can see a section ready on the edge of the tree line. Also, they've reinforced the southern tree line in the west. With two infantry sections now. Starting to send machine gun fire. Rifle fire through the trees. As Rosberg is starting to lead the charge in the center for the uh, Allies. Oh, someone just got hit by Car 98. And yeah, the 6J need to take advantage. They've, uh, they've dominated here on the east and west. It's time for them to just be brave, get a little bit of map control. Hunker down into the, into a hard position and weather the next uh, wave that will come in for the Germans. Gore, they're getting a bunch of kills. He's just shooting down the uh, hill, uh, the roadside here, and finally someone hones in on the the sounds and takes him down. I think that was Yublinski there with the uh, sniper. You can see the western, uh, the eastern center is just completely open at this point. Only Marcus and Zyko is over here. Uh, the 6J could, if they wanted, just to push straight through. The only concentration of forces on the board at the moment for the Axis team is over here in the dense tree line. I don't see Dio. I think Dio's dead again. Where are you, Dio? Dio's dead again. God damn it, Dio. You can hear these allied mortars firing once more. I imagine they're going to be ha a hand hand landing. In the tree, like God, I'm getting tongue twisted a lot today. Mortars are actually behind me. Where are they? Mortars landing in the center to the east over here. It actually uh, almost lands on Zico and Marcus, who have to fall back yet again. And you can see the 6J have broken through the tree line now on the east here. They've made it to the edge of the tree line to the road. That gives them more and more map control. As uh, I think medics over here are going to... Yeah, medics are going to start tending to the wounded over here. As uh, Yublinski and Lecter, they both went down. So the first infantry have made it forward here for the 6J. A four-man squad. Hope, Lemon, Kennedy and Watson. Push through on the east. They're very close to capturing this next zone. It's actually their team commander over here. I think it's Marcus. So the uh, Yeah, Marcus is actually the uh, Axis commander here. As Lemon and Kennedy and Hope, they're wrapping around this road, trying to take map control. 
They are very exposed to fire coming in from the uh, west. They do have this little divot here that they can hide behind, but this is where the map gets a little bit more flat, a little bit more open. There aren't as many trenches here. You do have, like, these trenches running along this road here. But you can see it's a lot more open area in this portion of the map. As reinforcements are starting to fall in on the east, you've got Cheese Rag and Joy now falling through. The uh, allies are suffering a few casualties over here on the uh, western side and the south side of the trees. Shore and McCribbin, they both go down. Mortars still firing. We'll have to see where those mortars are landing for the allies. Two rounds of mortars. Where are they landing? Where are they? Ooh, some big grenades going out there from Marcus and Zico. Landing uh, on Kennedy. Kennedy's probably going to go down from this unless he can tend to his wounds. Yeah, he's going to tend to his wounds quickly. As uh, Zico and Marcus doing a good job there, holding holding back the allies the best they can with a few few grenades, few low, YOLO grenades, and the 6J are starting to do a little bit of an incursion here through the trees. They're starting to push through the trees on the west. It's going to be hard for them to push through these. Dense uh, tree line though. Look at look at the amount of cover here the uh, German team has. They also have the high ground because the hill gradually goes up. It's going to be very hard for the allies to push through this dense tree line. It might just be best just to, in my opinion, leave it to the mortars. Let the mortars handle it. Let the mortars deal with that. Don't don't waste your infantry numbers. Bomb them out with mortars. Uh, was that flagpole always there, or did it just appear? <laughs> Nevertheless, the Allies have taken the second objective, so the Allies currently hold the majority. If the, t if the game was to end now, they would win. Germans still haven't caught... Or is that it now? They're still waiting. Uh, so both teams still have one respawn wave yet to, uh, to use. And I've got to say, the Allies are in a very commanding position at the moment. They have definitely the numbers on the board. They have the map control, and they have the uh, captures. So if I was the 6J, I'd be a little bit more steady at this point. Let your mortars do their job. Don't throw your lives away. And weather, uh, weather the next onslaught that's going to come in for the uh, from the Germans. I'm waiting to see the uh, 6J from over on this flank do something on the east. They could push, if they break through this tree line here in number, they could maybe start to flank around and help help the infantry that's stuck in the trees to the west. Uh, there may be, there may be, are. You see the 6J really struggling to get through this uh, tree line over here. The uh, Germans are just so well embedded at this point. They've got sandbags down. They've got some good high positions. They've got the, all the trees, the foliage. Ooh, some accurate Bren fire. Yeah, the 6J. They've got to be careful they don't get embedded. They don't want to get uh, uh, pinned down in the trees because then, again, German mortars, all it takes is one accurate German mortar if they're all grouped up and pinned down by the only hardcover. And they're going to lose all the advantage they've built up over here. The game so far. See what is going on with the Germans here. I can see them. They're dropping back a little bit. 
So the German team are falling back a little bit over here in the west towards the very end row of the uh, tree line. Obviously, you've got this bunch here, but they're, they're being pushed all the way back to the very edge of the tree line. And here comes the, re uh, the reinforcements. I believe this will be the last reinforcement wave coming in for the Germans. And i got to say, uh, I don't think the 6J took full advantage of what they could have had had at this point especially over here on the east i feel like they could have got a lot got into a lot better position ready to deal with the next reinforcement wave coming in oh they just did get a kill on zico so marcus is uh all on his own now german commander but yeah i feel like uh 6j wasted potential to get even better map control over here i mean they do have this nice hedge row but Mm. Then again, what, what advantage could they have taken? Maybe moved along into this road line here. This road line could have been huge with this deep trench. It would have allowed you to fire over this open field. Let's head on over to the west because the 6J are pushing further and further through these western tree lines very steadily. They've got big numbers over here in the west. Got two sections slowly starting to push through, but this German uh, German holdout here, they're soon going to be bolstered by the reinforcements coming in. And they've dug down so well. And they have some great cover to use. Look at this great cover here that they've got to hide behind. Oh, a great headshot there on the one cart. Whoever did that. He's going to be pissed because the respawn wave has already been called. So he's now out for the rest of the game. Great battle going through the tree line there, though. I've got to say. Uh, I, I am worried for the 6J, though, on the eastern and center flank. They could quickly get overwhelmed, and uh, we all know how good the IO-9 and BIA are. Once they start to steamroll the team, it could quickly change things. Gore. Oh, Gore gets tagged there as he just places the MG42. Second MG set up. Scott got disconnected. Ah, uh, you know. Victory is assured now for the 6GA. Some great shots here, though, from Lemon, I've got to say. This, uh, this hedgerow that they've got, it has allowed them to halt the reinforcements coming in for the Germans. Can they hold that, though? Because there is going to be... A, I, you can hear it already. The machine guns are open and fine now for the German team. And there goes the mortars, just like that. The superior firepower that the Germans can throw down with those mortar, uh, with those machine guns, and now the mortars on top of it. That might start to open the hole for them to push through. Meanwhile, over on the western side in the tree line, the uh, Allies have suffered a few casualties as they push through. The reinforcements arrive for the German team. More casualties going down there. Just heard the bullets splash off some, uh, some metal. As the Germans are forced all the way to the edge, but they have got the numbers now to hold. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear some Allied Mortars soon, maybe? Allied Mortars could land perfectly in this hedgerow here and get a bunch of kills. Same, same wise over on the western edge of the tree line. Reinforcement Wave 3 has been caught, so both teams have used their respawn waves now. Both teams have used all their respawn waves. Allies control the majority of the objectives. And they control the majority of the map. Can they hold on to it? Germans have mortars currently act, uh, up. They have majority of numbers. They have majority of machine guns up as well. Those German mortars are doing a good job pushing back the Allies here on the eastern and west uh, center side.
be very hard for the Germans at this point. Uh, the Allies. If they don't uh, deal with those mortars. And just like that, there comes the mortars. Two more casualties dealt to those mortars. They need to have their own mortars firing now to deal some damage to the, uh, the Germans who are pushing in in numbers. And there it comes. German infantry slowly starting to creep forward. Having those machine guns and mortar get, uh, act as suppression to the enemy. Gives them the opportunity to just creep forward. Again, lack of number. I feel like the Allies had more positioning. Like if they had some infantry over here as well. Just help to help cover. Spread out a little bit more. Took more of the map control. The mortars wouldn't have been devastating. And creating that crossfire would have caused more havoc. Dio, of all people, he gets tagged. Marcus there, leading as the uh, as the team commander. The Germans are fighting to reclaim the majority objective here. Kennedy is trapped. As the Germans are slow. Look how, look how well they are spreading out. They're taking as much of the map as they can. Oh, Kennedy might get caught out here as he breaks from the next line of cover. He just got away without being seen. And uh, the western tree line, the, the allies have com come to a complete halt over here. It's just so hard to push through this tre uh, dense tree line, especially with the mortars going on. It's just so hard for them to push through this dense tree line here. Elder and Pope are both under fire. They're, they're trying to push forward the best they can. Rifle and machine guns going over their heads. Eldar gets a headshot. Uh, sorry. Pope gets a headshot. Eldor manages to make it just to a little bit of hardcore as Robertson gets hit by a mortar there. A couple of friendly mortars there as High got taken out by, I think, a mortar or a grenade. Eldar, he's going to go down. He's been hit by some shrapnel. And then a mortar just finished him off before he could tend to his wound. We've got a big battle going on over here in the center and the east, though, as the uh, German forces are doing their best to try claim the center objective. The Gore has reset up his MG in a great position to fire through the tree line and the hedges. Resolution also here with his MG just suppressing through the trees. Oh, a big mortar there from the Allies. That's exactly what they needed. A huge mortar there. Wipes out an entire section of infantry. Resolution and Marcelo, they both go down. And I think that might have just saved the East. Those Allied mortars are coming in perfectly clutch. And that might have just saved the Eastern flank. As reinforcements of infantry also are starting to fall in now. Huge mortar there. It's not over, though. The, ally, uh, the Axis still have numbers. Some big grenades or some big mortars on their own end could quickly change that. There are reinforcements starting to push through the trees as well in the west. Reinforcements coming in. Trying to push through this western tree line. Yablinski, he's, uh, he's gone down again. He had that sniper in hand. Ooh, big machine gun fire there. Take that, takes down Hope. Let's just go and see who the uh, allied mortars are. We've got Scott, Grimes, and Cheese right there on the mortars. Watson, he's about to go down. He gets sprayed by machine gun fire. Again, like, 
Those, those allied mortars got a big amount of kills, but there are still numbers over here for the Germans to do something. And they have their own mortars active still. And they know exactly where the allied position is. So those mortars, all they have to do is start raining down in clusters. Yoko, Yoko looking to break through the uh, bush line here. It's trying. And uh, over on the west, we've kind of got the stalemate in the west of the Allies. They're kind of stuck at the three-quarter mark, pushing through this uh, dense tree line. The uh, German mortars just keep raining down along with the machine gun and rifle fire. Kind of got a war of attrition going on at this point, as both sides are just picking each other off with rifle fire, machine gun fire, and mortars at a distance. And another big mortar there just took out two more Allied soldiers. Again, like, the Allies here on the east, they're, they're just suffering, slowly being bled out by attrition. Why show a Yoko or Shana read? Look at the amount of casualties over here, though, for the Allies. Again, just those mortars landing down and the rifle fire coming through. Another casualty there from the MG fire still went down at the back. The Germans are just so well embedded just behind this corner of uh, the trees here where there's this big build-up. Take a break. No. Okay, there's a little drink. I took a, I took a little break. I took a little break. Ooh. No? Oh. oh, there we go. The moment I move away. Look at the amount of casualties the allies have suffered here. Just because they were so bunched up in that little group in this tree line, they didn't spread out more, move along the entirety of it. Those mortars are just picking them off. Again, we... What they had as a large uh, success in numbers, they are starting to lose on attrition a little bit. They still hold number majority, but at the rate they're losing them, that won't hold for very long as Mac Bean has broke through the uh, hedgerow here. Can he see crit right in front of him? He does. Headshot there. A little bit of a counter-offensive coming on here for the 6GA on the east as they move to the tree line trying to take out these mortars. You can see the allies on the ridge, they know where the mortar is, they can hear where the mortars are. If Reed was just brave and poked his head over this hill, Oh, no, never mind. He gets shot at. Medics over here. Desperately. Becker, no. Becker, tend to your own wounds first, Becker. Tend to your own wounds first. I'm close bleeding. Becker! Who's actually left? Becker just died in front of my eyes, but he wasn't there. Becker was dead. Enough all the one furthest forward here. When did Jenkins get all the way over here? I mean, bravo! Wait, reinforcement wave four? Was there four waves? Did I miscount? Oh, th there's unit modifiers. So they, they might have a modifier to their uh, uh, team template that gives them an extra one. 
the, some some like have extra tanks, some have like, extra mortars and MGs, some have extra like infantry. They could have an extra respawn wave, and if they do, I think that that will seal it. Unless the Germans also have one. Sure, just got a team killer, Nuffle. Nuffle who pushed all the way forward. No. Nuffle, why? Sure. <laughs> yeah, if I got team killed, that's kind of the noise I would make as well. Yeah, we kind of got a, fight, a war of attrition going on at the moment. Uh, the Allies have that extra respawn wave coming in. I don't know if the Germans have one. I don't see one coming in. But if... If that is the case, if the Germans don't have another respawn wave and uh, the Allies play cool and steady, that will be an Allied victory for tonight if it's if it carries on as it stands. Let's have a look at the kills again quickly. So, again, the, the, the difference has continue to grow as the allies have 62 kills forces versus the 47 of the axis deaths 62 versus 83 wounds 87 versus 26 76 sorry and then 32 revives versus 27 revives Yablinski leading with 12 kills currently for the allies oh no he's drawing with scott what oh scott's on the borders that's cheating and then iron glory with 12 kills on the axis side Has anyone made it through the event with no deaths yet? Let's have a look. Reed hasn't died yet. Yoko hasn't died yet. And Yazoo hasn't died yet. And then on the German side, we've got Come Lord. He hasn't died yet. And Hannibal. Oh, and also a Harper, the uh, Allied commander, as Reed gets hit by Mortar there. What are you saying, Web? What are you saying? Who? Damn, man. I they really need to update the face models. They're so bad. The character models are so bad. I hate them. On their head, by the way. So, oh, that was that was beautiful. I might have ammo nine. <laughs> Yeah, we're just waiting for the respawn wave to arrive for the allies. With that respawn wave, they might just do one big push up the map. Try to take what they can. The center is still completely open, along with the east. It's pretty pretty thin for the Germans. How many have we got over here? We've got four German, five Germans over on the east side. The western tree line is the heaviest held. But if the Allies, again, they have the option to move along this road here. There is cover. There is a trench. They could move along this road here. Pushing them all the way deep into the center of the map to here. We should give them great cover fire to help on the west. And also covering fire to cut off any reinforcements to the east. As we've actually got the Germans falling back a little bit. They just launched a whole bunch of smokes to the northwest. So obviously don't sit hey, on it. There's only hey. uh, web on the point at the moment. Um, they've just dropped smoke on the road coming in, so they're likely going to be yeah, pushing soon. Road, road east or road north? Oh, there is a respawn way for the uh, Germans. Again, this is where well, the Allies need to be a bit more. I feel like they need to be a little bit more dominating in the control that they've built don't don't sit on what you have just push forward more get into another strong position because if it turns into another war of attrition i don't know the the 6j is once again gathering here in the western uh, tree line looking to push forward they have pushed the germans further and further back but if that respawn wave arrives they're just gonna have another hard slog on their hand
Iron Glory getting his MG put in a. Uh, damn, that is. Oh my god, what a position. How do they keep finding these awesome MG positions? Look at the absolute devastation that MG has caused to the 6J here in the center. Oh, Lecter gets absolutely rinsed by the MG there. Again, if they moved up the center of the map along those trenches, that would not be happening right now. Likewise, the Allies have uh, returned the favor with a few accurate mortifiers here, wiping out free, man, free men of the Allies in the West. But again, if I feel like if the Allies just pushed forward more when they had the advantage, when they knew things were quiet... And now with the German reinforcements coming in and basically an entire squad of 6J being wiped out in the center. That, that, that is going to go back into the favor of the uh, Germans, I've got to say. We have a big concentration of forces here on the western tree line, but... Mm. I've got to say, if it continues like this, the Germans are just slow. They're just... They're just doing this war of attrition just a little bit better. They might be behind on kills. They might have died the most, but when it comes to a certain map control, I feel like they can uh, they can just demonstrate that a little bit better. And those Akbeen just got picked off from... I think he was picked off all the way from west. But again, these mortars, these German mortars. Because the Germans know exactly where the Allies are going to be pushing from and where they're gathered, it, it just stalls the uh, 6th Jane what they can do. It takes them too long at this point to get into a new position. And that's just when their numbers just start to add up. They're getting a little bit too settled. Getting a little bit too content in what they have. Instead of going for more, they're too content. That's how I feel. They need to push more. Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. At a time in this event, I think that's probably about 20 minutes left. Uh, it's Oh, yeah. There we go. 20... The timer is working again. Nice. 23 minutes left. God damn, I'm so good at keeping the time. So good. Yeah. Oh. If Seb, uh, I, they have to watch out for friendly fire, that's the problem. But Seb and Rosberg have done a good push along here. They can get to this uh, mound here. If they can get and hold this mound here, that cuts off the axis from getting back into the tree line. It also gives them a potential to fire across to the eastern and center part of the map. Pull of casualties over here. I'm not sure how Shaw and uh, Williams died. There's allied mortars doing a smokescreen further south now in the tree row. Further north, should I say, in the tree row. You can see a big concentration of Germans now holding this uh, little, what this be, little village, little farming hamlet? What the hell is this place? Seb and Rothberg have made it to this mound. Hopefully they don't get shot in the back now. But that gives them a good position for the rest of the team to push forward. As we've got the 6J again. They've, they've pushed forward numbers onto the objective. But look how gathered they are. Mortars. This is... <laughs> spread out. Damn it. You know how accurate their mortars are. Spread. Please spread. You don't need to sit on the objective. You can spread out. Oh, it's painful. And there comes the mortars. Two people hit already. They're both going to go down. Bowler's going to bleed out. There goes Bowler. Is he going to get it? Nope. Bowler and Bowler both go down. 
You don't need to hold on to someone's ass. <laughs> As the uh, 68, it looks like Seb and Rosberg, they fell back to uh, let the rest of the team know that they can push forward more. As Pope, he gets sprayed down by an MG there. Seb and Rosberg communicating that important information back to the rest of the team. Allowing them to push to this hedgerow. But uh, hedgerow embankment. It looks like the uh, Axis are going to be shifting their focus... And it looks like they might be gathering their forces for a big push through the center and the east, which makes sense. That's where the 6J are always weakest, because they always gather up, and they're just an easy target for mortars. There's been another casualty to mortars here. Another casualty to mortars here. And they just they keep running back to the same position where they keep getting mortared. They, they need to be more assertive. They need to take more map control and spread out. That, as it stands, that is half their strength gone to just some uh, mortars. As uh, Seb and Rosberg, then the next, they've continued their push through. They've entered the southernmost part of the trees now. As Adam Pingu, he gets shot out that window. Smoke barrage going down for the 6J. And here comes the push. From the Axis, the first squadron pushing forward on the center here. The BIA squad section. If only they push down to here, you know? Would he give them perfect cover? Don't tell me we've had even more casualties to mortars. Oh my guys. It looks like uh, the 6J, they've got a squadron holding him back in the tree line. And they're actually shooting at friendlies at this point. I'm gonna have to watch out. They don't think Seb's gone down. Rosberg is out in the uh, position of enemies. If they can crack through the tree line here and make it to this building complex and clear it out, that will give them a good position to start shooting the uh, the advancing eastern side in the back. Again, the 6J, they've fallen back again onto the objective, which is just going to mortars. Gulf Allied Mortars are pushing back the defensive that was coming in for the Germans. Okay, time is ticking. 18 minutes. The Germans know they need to do something. They are running out of time. Both teams are on their last lives. As we've got a bit of a push coming in for the 6J through the Western Trees lines now. They're putting pressure on the Ion 9 section. We're holding up this large... I don't know what you call this building. It's like a farmhouse. Strange building. The Dutch are strange when it comes to building their buildings. Just suppressing the windows the best you can. You can see some reinforcements uh, falling in from behind the Iron Iron, sending in a small section. Hold this point of the map. Reinforcements going in as Eldar is going to be the first one to break. Put himself into a very precarious position right here. Just like that, he goes down. As the BIA, are, they're using the center part of the map, these trenches, and they're slowly going to start moving down these trenches as the mortars again raining down on that second objective. Webb, he just gets hit by a mortar there. I don't know what this 6J section is doing at the back. I feel like these, this section is completely pointless at the moment. I feel like they need to push forward. If they were push forward and if they took this mound here they'll be able to cover this section and also fire across the map i feel like they uh, it's a wasted uh, firepower that they've got right now as more mortars go down as watson and trebian they both go down what are you doing boys and girl 
Alright, good luck. Bring it. What was that? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, oh. Yo, Tony went down. Friendly. Someone drag him back. Oh. Chase is just able to move up. Right, you're captured in the house. Six, yeah, still battling with this house here. This you gotta say this section here with Seb, Rosberg, Pope, Fonda, Williams, Gallagher and McEwen. They're doing a good job of battling this uh, hard hard embedded section here, but uh, without any support, they're not gonna last very long. They're in such a precarious position there. And that's not even speaking about the center and eastern flank, which, again, they're just slowly losing this war of attrition down to these mortars. You can hear the German mortars still firing. We're going to have some more mortars coming in any second. Wait to see where these mortars land. Oh, they're taking a long time to come. What? Come on, mortars. I can hear you. There they go. Yeah, they're getting closer. There goes Hope. Uh, let's go have a look and see what's happening over in the Western Tree Line again. Time is 14 minutes. And yeah, the 6J infantry over here that push forward, they're under a lot of pressure now. They don't have any good cover at all. They're just getting over uh, outnumbered. Outgunned. Yeah, I think I'm going to that catch line. Chase, the captain said it's at your discretion. You can either send a fire team, stay put if you've got a good position, or just um, send your entire section. It's entirely up to you. Bro, I'm getting shot at all the time. Okay, section four on your feet. We're following Stevie. He's going to have to lead us in carefully because all right, section this is four. A... You have to follow me. I'm getting shot at. Right, me, me. I know you're getting shot at. It's a war. What do you think? Who said that? I'm getting shot at. No shit. <laughs> what do you expect? Let's see what Steely does here. I think, again, I think it was just too late. It's the 6J infantry that was made it all the way up here. They've just been wiped out by mortars and grenade fire. And small arm fire. It's just, again, too late. Too late to move and get into position and take advantage of uh, of what you gained. As the BIA have done a little bit of a probing attack here on the objective. Although that being said, the Axis team are starting to lose uh, casualties themselves. They are slowly starting to dwindle in numbers, but... I'd say it's still the uh, allies who are dwindling in numbers quicker. Jason, what could be a good idea is on this hill setting up your uh, MG because it has an excellent view over the entire northeast area. Copy that. This is where we had ours for a while. Everyone Let's set up here, boys. Following. Keep your eyes open. You can hear those uh, German mortars still raining down. I can hear Allied Mortars also firing back. As McBean dodges a mortar there. It's... Oh, he didn't dodge the second one, though. It really is down to some well-placed mortars now. That could really be what clenches this battle, as numbers are pretty even. The Germans have held back a lot of their infantry. As the uh, MG42 now is spraying towards the western tree lines. They're gonna get they're getting sandwiched from crossfire because that section got wiped out to the north of them 
that's allowing the uh, access team to now push back through the teams. And also with the MGs that got set up in the center, it's just crossfire. And this 6GA section, yeah, they just moved into position way too slowly. They didn't take advantage of what they had. And uh, we've had some more accurate mortars here. We've got another three, three casualties for the allies. And yeah, they're just bleeding attrition at this point. Too hesitant, I feel. They, they did a great job early on to gain map control very steadily. But when it came to the latter stages of this uh, event, I feel like there was times when they was just too, too, too cautious, maybe too, too comfortable in what they achieved instead of going out and claiming more and more map control when they had the uh, time to do so. You can actually see they're starting to fall back now, the 6GA section due to that crossfire. They might decide to just completely fall back entirely and just try to uh, defend the, uh, the center objective because they are outnumbered now i'd say not two to one maybe how about 50 percent as those german mortars they're so accurate and they know exactly where the allies are because they just keep going to the same place a couple of allied mortars coming down No real concern from them, though, as the uh, IR and Dio are starting their next assault on this objective. If I think about, yep, less than 10 minutes left, the next infantry wave assault seems to be starting to uh, come in. As more, again, Joy now goes down to the mortars. Kennedy and Tribune are the only ones next to the objective now. And the Germans are just using this trench road to slowly creep forward. That we just missed it as born. He gets sprayed down by the MG42. And I think. I think. As the as the numbers are starting to add up in terms of casualties for the Allies, I think we're seeing a complete shift in power now on the board. With uh, eight minutes left. I think you're going to start seeing a big push come in for the, uh, the Germans. They have suffered a few casualties here and there again. Well, they have what they need to get on this objective. And we've got an entire infantry section of the 6J just over here. Kind of isolated at this point. Your Blonsky's got that sniper, though. I mean, maybe... Single-handedly, he, he could probably hold this back. Time is running out. Seven minutes left. Did I? Uh, I can see a concentration of German forces starting to build up here, though, on the east. And uh, BIA sending a couple of scouts forward, a couple of probing scouts. I think in the next couple of minutes, we might see a big push come in from the uh, the Axis team over there on the east. Small numbers kept over here on the west, and you can see the uh, kills wise. We're starting to even up a little bit. Axis, uh, the Allies have a 17 kill lead, but they're slowly starting to even up. The uh, Germans have number advantage at this point. By accident. Oh, nice. How nice. We have a pretty good overview here. 
Yeah, nice. Six minutes. Okay, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get six minutes. Wait, he goes well, the, well, the left or the right? It's six minutes, but it's an extra ten minutes if it gets contested. And I think that's what we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see the uh, the Germans push in in the next couple of minutes and then contest it. High is still on those mortars, putting a few shots down. Maybe getting ready to put some smokes down. There goes the mortars. Let's see what kind of mortars they are. MG42 opening up a few bursts as well. And that's basically the battle right below us now. This this section here is basically what we're going to be looking at. And there go the smokes. It could have been a test round to see where the mortars land in. That could have just been that could have been a test round to see how dialed in the mortars are. We'll have to see. I can see the allied mortars landing further back as well. They're uh, no concern. The Germans, those mortars way off. And there, here comes the mortars again. For the Germans. We just heard two rounds fired, so they've done they dialed in a test round. Let's see if they throw some more smokes down. Oh, that's a good uh, allied mortar there though. Those are some good allied mortars then. Just landed seconds too late. And here come the German mortars bombarding the point. And you can see the infantry slowly getting in position as Trebi and he gets wiped down. Again, they just they go back to the same position over and over again. They just sit in the same position and they just get hit by these mortars. So now it's down to Bowler and Kennedy to hold the next wave coming in. And Bowler's already been hit. By a little bit of a grenade there. Stiglitz and Dio go down. They're getting suppressed from all the way over on the western tree line. So some good shots there. Dio, Dio, do you have a kill? Say anything. Like his first time. It's like his first time, you know? Those German uh, mortars landing a little bit further back now. They're going to do a good job of holding back some reinforcements, potentially. Mund. Pushing across the street. They're putting some shots down on Yablinski. Harper is the commander here. He's going to have to uh, help hold this cap now as the commander for the Allies. And if he goes down, that means communication for the team is going to go down as a whole. Bowler's pushing back into the trenches. He gets a kill on Mond. He stabs him. Will he get crop? Come on, Frankie. Good work by Frankie there. I'm on the board. Three minutes. And unless the Germans push in now, I don't see them uh, doing that. But those mortars, again, just so accurate. The Allies might have just done enough to hold on. These last three minutes, we'll have to see as Jablinski, he goes down and he was lead team. He was lead on this team for kills. Yeah, 15 kills there for Jablinski. So with that sniper, he was actually a big asset in helping hold this defense. Two and a half minutes left. Bowler is doing his best to hold this back and BIA and I and I have suffered a lot of casualties over here. Oh, shit, as Gord takes a headshot there. And uh, if it stands as it is, the Allies will win this because there is no contestant contestment going on with the Axis at the moment. If it stays like this for the last two minutes, the Allies will win. They hold the majority. In terms of numbers, the Germans still have the number advantage, but uh, half their uh, team, what they have left, is still over there holding the Western tree line. You see the mortars moving now. The mortars getting hit by a couple of smoke grenades from the allied team. I'm on board. Let's just hold this down. If I hold down Y, we can keep an eye on time now. Minute and a half left. Will the Germans get on there to... Uh, uh, Germans and Italian. Get on there to uh, contest it. Or is it going to be GG? Minute left. 
The Mortar team is pushing forward. High Marcus maximum. They know time is against them. So now they've sent the Mortar team to fight. And they're actually doing a good job. Again, no one's over here watching this flank. No one's over there watching the flank. And it's just going to allow the IO-9 to push in. And all it takes is a couple, couple of the infantry kills and that's it. 50 seconds left. You see a couple more. Not gonna lie, this Yasu guy is sort of um, growing on me more like a tumor now than he was a nice loaf of bread. Whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean? You mean? Callum Dub subscribe. This minute. Callum, appreciate the sub, man. How you doing? 16 seconds. Marcelino and Lysander just go down. The six year trying their best to hold in the last few seconds. There is five infantry here. For the Germans. Point is contested. As Bowler, he traded. Kennedy, he goes down to a grenade. And yet, the point is contested. Ten minutes left. We have four Germans against one, two, three, eight allies in this section. But there is a lot more Germans on the other side of the map. And there goes those mortars again. Harper goes down now. Team Commander... Get hit by those mortars. Let's go down. Let's look at the battle a little bit closer now. As Alphys, he just goes down. Highest jumped on his MG. I'm not quite sure how he survived that grenade there. Robinson, she goes down. Marcus goes down. So it's a 2v2 on the front line at the moment. But we've got a few coming in. Anderson. Gets the kill on high. That's just Maxi Man. Who gets the kill on Anderson? One free free uh, one free one versus three situation right now. Germans still have a lot of reinforcements they can drive in. They've got a one full squad still. Maxi Man heard the running of Jonathan. He heard his footsteps. He's waiting, he's got his pistol in hand. And there come the final German section. They're finally moving out. The allied mortars are also moving forward. Maximum got the kill on Jonathan. Maximum is holding this at the moment. It's 1v2. He's hoping, no doubt, the rest of his team gets here as fast as they can. Oh, it's 1v3, sorry. Event because I'll back up. Grimes and Scott are rushing forward as the more as the best they can. As the uh, IO9, they still have this section over here, but this section is gonna they gonna have to move quickly. One, two, three, five. So eight. They've got an eight-man squad over here, which still outnumbers what the Allies have. But damn, they have to move quickly. If Maximan dies, I think that's it. I think that's GG. Steel, no worries, good as, as a medic, doing his best to get his team back in this in some kind of strength. Where are they? I heard an SL go towards the east. I took down one of them in the bush sphere, but I don't know where the others were. Chase it. Dragon, dragon, dragon. I'm working on it. It's a bit weird. I have four morphine left. It's alright, but it's worth it. Ah. Yeah, it's not left, it's not left, it's not left. It's perfect. Okay. I would say save it. That was a waste of a morphine. Hey, do Max, man. You having a good time? Jump on the mortar. Just do one shot straight in the air. Go out. Go out in style. One shot straight in the air. Just jump on it quickly. Just do a bunch of shots straight up into the air. You never know. Maybe a fire 
Germans northwest in the barn complex. They were moving west last time I saw them, so they could be coming around on our west flank. All right, Scott, I'm you see the edge of this wood, uh, yeah, southwest. Yeah, yeah, you and Grub. Right. You got an ammo box? <laughs> oh my god. How many do we have? We have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got uh, nine versus ten. Ten versus nine. Maximum, you can do a few. Oh, grenade. That's actually a big grenade. Oh, it bounced back. I thought it went further. I thought it went to the road. Ball is shooting to the south, though. They have spotted this IR 9 section that is flanking through the south. Come, Lord, leading the charge. They're going to run right on top of them. Harper with a collateral. <laughs> Harper with the Harper with the collateral. Come Lord goes down. This is the time Maximan needs to start doing some mortars. Oh, and a bunch of kills there though. Philip, Evie and Dirk, they go down. Only Talentless and Clun left. And I think that probably means we're going to get an ally victory. It was close at the end. Maximan also goes down as Anderson breaches the hedge row. Was a volley of rounds towards those hedges. So that means we've got only two, one German left. Talentless. He made it to the end. But I think that does mean we're going to have a very close victory for the Allies, man. A very close victory. For Jesus. It came down to what? Ten people at the end? Ceasefire. That's going to be an allied victory. GG. Let's have a look at the kills quickly. 92 versus 63. Or 86 versus 114. 128 wounds versus 118. And 59 rise for 34. Allies with a victory. Most kills. Yablinski with 16. 10 from Grimes, who was on the mortars. And 14, who was Scott on the mortars. 12 from Iron Glory on the Axis. 7 with Hannibal. GG guys. Oh, well. So, good game. Yeah, good years. game all around. A few mistakes here and there, but I feel both teams did play pretty well. And it was cool to watch, especially at the beginning with like the, the trenches slowly advancing up and down the map from both teams. Um, if this is on YouTube, as always, do please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time, YouTube. Mm, take care. And a big thank you to last month's Twitch subscribers Sinner Shy, The CJ Reed, Wheeldale 303, Flora, Keldaf, The White Gamer 05, Kaiser NG, Mepinator, Hinkle, No Men Blimp, Shoot Inon, It's Carl's Designs, Jabes MX, Kane, GI underscore K, Callum Derp, Benjamin 101, Johnny I KDK, Brew, Jabes MX again, The CJ Reed, and Luna Gamer Fox.